T. Clark here, and this video is going to go over the 2023 uh, FRQ for Computer Science A, number 1A. So in one, question one, we're going to involve an appointment book class. So we have a class uh, called Appointment Book, which provides methods for students to schedule appointments with their teacher. So appointments can be scheduled during one of eight class periods. Um, so there's eight, so one to eight during the school day. Um, we just talked about that. Uh, requested appointment has a duration, uh, which is the number of minutes. The appointment will last. And each uh, period is 60 minutes. So the 60 minutes within a period are numbered zero through 59. In order for an appointment to be scheduled, the teacher must have a block of consecutive available minutes that contains at least the requested number of minutes in a requ requested period. Oh, okay. So if they, they have to have a certain number of minutes within that period to be able to schedule an appointment. Um, it must start and end within the same period. So you can't carry over from period to period. Okay, so here we have the uh, partial class for appointment book. Um, we have two helper methods, it says, is minute free. And since it's a helper method, we're going to use it. We're not going to code it. We're going to use it. And what does it do? It says it returns true if a specific minute in a specific period is available for an appointment and then returns false otherwise. And then it gives us the preconditions where a period is going to be valid. So users will only input a correct period. They won't put in nine or they won't put in zero. So you don't have to worry about that. And also users will only give you a <clears throat> valid number from zero to 59 for the minute. So that's is minute free. And we're going to use that in um, the appointment uh, part 1A, which is a reserve block. We don't have to worry about yet. Um, it'll be part B. Um, but for part A, we have to use find free block or we have to create, we have to write the code for find free block. That's hard for me to say. Find free block. Blah. Okay, so it searches for the first block of duration. So the first set of like 20 minutes, the first 10 minutes um, that are free during a specific period. So it finds the free minutes during um, a period as described later on. Next page. Okay, It'll, it will return the first minute. So it'll find that block and it'll return the first minute in that block. If it's found and if it doesn't find any in that period, um, uh, it will, it'll return a negative one. So again, we are given the period. So we're going to use period one through eight, and then we're going to have the duration of the the kid's schedule, I guess. They, they want to make a schedule with the teacher, so how long they want to meet with that teacher, I guess. That's the, the duration. Uh, don't worry about B yet. So let's go to A. So here is here are the directions for A. So it says, write that method, the free find free block, It'll search the, the specific period for the first block of free minutes that is a certain length long. Um, I just said that. That's basically, this just repeats what it said in the um, uh, method header above the method signature. And it says, oh, right here. So the find free block method uses the helper method is minute free. So we had to use that is minute free, which returns true if it's, uh, we just went over that. Okay, so we have an example. So here we go. We have period two. So currently, period two, um, someone has a 10-minute block right there from 0 to 9. Someone else has a 15-minute block. They're meeting a, a teacher at uh, 15 to 29. Um, and then someone else has a 5-minute block with the teacher from 45 to 49. So the available minutes that teacher has for period two are 10 to 14, the 30 to 44, and 50 to 59. So if we have find free block 2, 15, so 2 is a period. So we're in this period, this uh, specific period. We want to have 15-minute block. Um, and if you look at the yeses, we have yes right there. So 15 minutes starting at 30. And it returns 30 because that's when it starts. Um, and nothing is done. We're not, we're not uh, scheduling it. We're just seeing if it's free. Right? We're returning the minute it's free. We're not scheduling anything yet. That'll be, that'll be for part B. And then if we want to find free block two, nine, what's the first yes available for nine minutes? Not that one. This one is, right? So 15 minutes, that's much longer than nine minutes. So it would also return uh, 30 because that's when, that's when the minutes start. <coughs> Excuse me. And then if you want to do find free block 220, so if you look here, we have 20, um, no, no, um, 20, no, or well, I'm looking at the yes rows. I'm going cross-eyed here. It's so small. Um, so none of these yes available times is 20 minutes. 
And yeah, you can like if you're in real life, you'd be able to schedule the five minutes and the 15 minutes and take a break or something. But in this scenario, um, there's no 20 minute block. OK, so I want to find the blocks. So I don't have minutes. Um, so I want to go through that period, checking every minute to see if the minute is available using that helper method. So I'm going to scroll down and I have the helper method. I kind of hacked together some extra code. I'm going to be using is minute free. I could probably just reference this up here as well. Is minute free. I'll probably do that. I'll use the paper over on the left. So I'm going to say, um, what's the first minute free? The first minute free currently is not free. There's no minutes free yet because I haven't found one. So my first minute free is negative one. Okay, so uh, there's no minutes free yet. And then I'm going to um, go through um, every minute. I'm going to uh, put a space there for something. So I'm going to say for every minute starting at zero and going until not equal to 60, oh, m, m less than, and we're going by one, right? We're going minute by minute. We're going through that hour, that free, the hour period. Uh, we're going to check every minute. So I'm going to say, um, um, and I want to find the duration. I want to find the duration. Duration, another word for duration is the count. So I'm going to set up a count variable for how many minutes are free. So this is the count is how many minutes I'm counting that are currently free. So I say, is a minute free? So if I uh, look over here, is minute free? I look at that helper method I'm going to be using, is minute free? And I check the um, period in minute, and I have period. So I'm just going to pass it along. So period, is period two free for however many, for the current minute? So that's the M. Is this minute free? Is that minute free? Is the next minute free? Is the next minute free? So that's what I'm asking. I'm asking I'm basically asking for every all 15, 0 through 59, is, is that one free? Is that one free? Is the next one free? Is that one, next one free? So that's my main if statement. And if it's free, um, if my count is starting, so if I'm counting at 0, I'm going to say if count is 0, that's when I start, start, uh, that's when I start counting the minute. So my first minute will be... Um, that minute m. Okay, let me draw something here. So if I have, if I have what, um, like this right here, the 30 minutes, I want to be able to count 30, 31, 32, I can't type 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, and then 38. Because that's the nine minutes right in the scenario. In this scenario right here, two, nine, I want, oh, that's not a eight, nine, that's an eight. Oh, what the heck just happened? Can I erase? I don't know how to erase. Oh, okay. So anyway, this should be 38, if I can draw it with my mouse. Um, and I don't know this is the block yet. I don't know the block, which block I have until I've gotten to the 38, I don't because I want the nine, right? Yeah, I want to have nine minutes. So I don't know. Um, I'm at nine until I get to that spot. So every time I reset the count, and then I find that it's a minute free, that'll be my first one. So I start counting at 30, so my first one's at 30. So then in this scenario, I'm going to start counting. So count plus plus. Oh, all the stuff goes down with it. Okay, let's get rid of that. That's clear. Clear screen. Okay. So basically, every minute free, I'm counting. If it's the first one to count, that's when I set up whatever minute I'm at to start counting that 30 minutes or the 50 minutes or the 10 minutes. That's what first represents. And that's what I'm going to return. And then I say, OK, if it's long enough, if the count is equal to duration. And I always like saying greater than or equal to. I don't think it'll be greater than or equal to. I'll just keep it equal to. But you could have put greater than or equal to. Um, but if the count equals the duration, then we're going to return the first minute that the teacher is free, uh, 30, right? Or maybe if it was only two minutes, it would have been the 10. Um, so return the first. But what if the minute is not free? How do I, if I'm going through and I see, okay, count 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So I got five minutes. But then once I get to 15, it should go back to zero. It should reset because there's none available. It doesn't 
keep going after this five and then get this five and then it's actually 20. No. So it shouldn't keep counting. It should reset every time there's not one available. So else, and my reset is just to say count equals zero, right? There's no current uh, minutes counted that are free if I'm like at this 15 minutes. And then I want to say first gets reset as well. So I just reset it to negative one. That's invalid like I have up top. And then, and then, and then, only when I'm done, and I'm done with a loop counting all 59, 60 minutes, zero to 59, then I can say there's no method found or there's no time period found. So I return negative one. I don't want to work, I don't want to, I don't want to return first because I might be in the middle of the count. Like at the end, I might be 10 minutes into the count and then I don't find it. I don't want to say return 50 because I might be looking for 20. So if I finish without actually doing this, uh, check in the duration, then I don't want to return the first one because that'll be 10. Let's, let's look at what I got so far. Oops, it scoots over. Okay, so this is actually, that's for part B. So let's look at part A. I got 30, 30, and negative one. So if I actually return first, what would I get? I would get probably 50 for the negative one. Yeah, because it's in the middle of counting that one. I don't want to be in the middle of counting. Um, so I just say negative one straight up. Okay, so that's the solution. Let's see if I can get it all on the screen because I know a lot of you just skip ahead. Nope, I can't. I have too many blanks. Oh, well, so I'll go slow. Go slow for you guys who skip ahead. So here we go. This is a solution for 1A. Scoot down a little bit. Wait a second. And then there's the rest of it. So have a good day.